making jet fuel out of carbon dioxide. Ooh, because everybody hates CO2. CO2 is going to kill us. I just breathed some CO2. I'm going to die. Uh, this is from fizz.org. Oh, we're going to be saved, saved from the evil CO2, uh, the fertilizer for green plants. But okay, let's read this. All right, so. Uh, let's see. A team of researchers affiliated with several institutions in the UK and Saudi Arabia have developed a way to produce jet fuel using carbon dioxide as a main ingredient. In their paper published in the journal Nature Communications, the group describes their process and its efficiency. The scientists continue to look for ways to reduce the amount of CO2 emitted. Uh, they have increasingly focused on certain business sectors. One of those is the aviation industry. You can't be green if your green is lack of CO2 and fly. You can't do that. Hold on just a second. All right. Oops. I should have hurt myself. Um, so let's keep reading here. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, the aviation industry, which accounts for approximately 12% of transportation-related CO2 emissions. Remember, transportation isn't the whole uh, sector either. It's just one part of, uh, I guess, sec we got all kinds of different sectors, electricity, transportation, agriculture. Curbing CO2 uh, carbon emissions, they say, in the aviation industry has proved to be challenging due to the difficulty of fitting heavy batteries inside an aircraft. Wow, again, you can't do that. Uh, let's see. In this new effort, the researchers developed a chemical process that can be used to produce carbon-neutral jet fuel. <laughs> Trust me, there's a kicker at the end of this. The research researchers used a process called organic combustion method to convert carbon dioxide into the air, into jet fuel uh, from the carbon dioxide in the air into jet fuel and other products involved using an iron catalyst with added potassium and manganese manganese along with hydrogen citric acid and carbon dioxide heated to 350 degrees celsius heated to 350 degrees celsius the process forced the carbon atoms apart from the oxygen atoms and co2 molecules which then bonded into the hydrogen atoms producing the kind of hydrocarbon molecules that comprise liquid jet fuel the process also resulted in the creation of water molecules and other products testing showed that over 20 hours the process converted 38 percent of the co2 into pressurized chamber into jet fuel and other products the jet fuel made up about 48% of the produced products. The others were water, prop, propylene, and eth ethylene. The researchers also noted that using this fuel in aircraft would be carbon neutral because burning it would release the same amount of carbon dioxide that was used to make it. <laughs> the research also claimed the process is less expensive than other methods such as those that convert hydrogen and water into fuel, primarily because it uses less electricity. They also point out that conversion systems could be installed in plants that currently emit a lot of CO2, such as coal fire plants. All right, so let's see if they have comments. Uh, of course not. Oh, wait, no, yeah, 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 right here. Okay, they do. Sweet. Trying to produce carbon neutral jet fuel is surely a step in the right direction, but there is a bigger target. Trucks, trains, ships. Okay, that's, that's fine. Electricity would have to be virtually free for this process to make any economic sense. It takes lots of energy to produce hydrogen and split oxygen from, uh, uh, from carbon. Electricity would have to be virtually free. We're going to talk about that. Uh, does a proffered process make enough fuel from CO2 to recycle fire in its own first furnace? Uh, <laughs> does the process make enough fuel from CO2 to recycle fire its own furnace? Interesting. While interesting, they don't bother saying how the two comes from the air, nor is the H2 uh, free and takes long cycle times. Much better is taking the air, CO2, water, and carbon copper catalyst driven by electricity. Interesting. All right, so uh, you want to pay 2000 for a flight from New York to Miami? Go ahead, make fuel out of CO2. Another science concept where a lot of people here even, I think, is BS. Can't wait to see another busted video by the by Thunder. I got to watch this guy. Thunderfoot? Okay. I don't know. I have to watch that. All right. So let's take a look. What's the problem here? I hope you read where we say uh, we're going to talk about. Oh, right here. It involved using an iron catalyst with added potassium, hmm, manganese, along with hydrogen, citric acid, and carbon dioxide heated to 350 degrees Celsius. How do you heat it? All right. Let's take a look here. All right. So we have lots of different articles on this thing all over the place. Like my man uh, Howard Hayden says, uh, 
The idea has been repeated with robotic efficiency in Forbes, a bunch of other places, science news for rope for students, MSN, popular mechanics, physics, chemical and engineering news, wire.com, many others. Let's take a look here. I want to see what we got. So we're going to say, what's this? So making jet fuel into carbon dioxide. And I try to find it on the DOI, but apparently the DOI website, uh, Department of Interior, uh, did not work for me. So let's see. Making jet fuel. Fizz. Forbes, the ox uh, right there. Uh, Lifeboat, Unilad, IB Times, Science Alert, Wired, the same thing, man. Fuel out of CO2. All right, let's read what my man Car uh, Howard Hayden says. A catalyst enables the chemical process to happen faster, but does not otherwise contribute chemically. It is, however, a bit deceptive to claim that the catalyst transforms CO2 into jet fuel because it requires at least as much energy to make the fuel from CO2 as was released when the fuel was burned to produce the CO2 in the first place. Not a single article I looked at, including the original, made note of that fact. That would require them to understand the grade school concept of conservation of energy. Of course, the cause of all climate change maladies, CO2, must be used for justification. Centuries into the future, when natural gas and other fuels become too expensive to retrieve, this process may become practical if powered by nuclear. Because you need electricity. You got to heat it, man. Where's the heat come from? So I was looking up the DOI article from uh, T. Zhao, O.A. Mac A., Transforming carbon dioxide and jet fuel using an organic combustion synthesized catalyst. But I couldn't find it, so it's interesting. And I'm not sure what that was about. So let me try to find that again. Because I want to see, did they take it down? Down? Because it's doi.org. Let's see what we come up with. This physics stuff is a PDF, but how come... It's weird, man. So let's, uh, keep, all right, we got uh, transforming carbon. And transform carbon dioxide into jet fuel. T oh, I'm sure it's the Department of Interior because I, I have the, uh, right there. Now let's take a look at this here. Yeah, there it is, right here. So if you, I'll put a link in the show notes if y'all want to read this. Woo! That smells good. Got some smoking going on there. The authors have patent application for iron manganese base catalyst. Yeah, well, I don't mind them having the application for that. But they're they're, they're the authors of it. Um, what's on DIY? Anyway, there you go. So don't trust anything you hear on climate change stuff. These people are, they, they know how to. Oh, we're gonna the batteries. We're gonna have batteries on airplanes. Yeah, we'll see ya.